Indeed, but among the tenets of our creed is a vow to never reveal too much to outsiders. In time, you may learn more, but not here, where the walls and trees may have ears. Basin Ibn Ishaq, 872. Hello and welcome to Visions of the Past. My name is Andrew, and I'm the host of this Assassin's Creed lore podcast. This is episode 62, and today we're going to talk about the man known as Basim Ibn Ishaq. Before we get into his history within Assassin's Creed, the first thing we have to talk about is where we can see him in the series. He is first seen in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, where he was voiced by Carlo Rota, and he is again seen in the final pages of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Song of Glories, third issue. Before I get started on his history, I do want to say we are going to spoil the complete story of Assassin's Creed Valhalla moving forward. So if you haven't finished the game and don't want any spoilers, come back after you have finished the game. Born to Ishak, the man who built the great mosque of Samara, Basim spent most of his youth in the House of Wisdom, the Grand Library of Baghdad. One day, while he studied the astronomer al Khwarizmi, he met the man who was at the time the head of the House of Wisdom and studied directly under him. In 870, Basim was stated in Constantinople, seemingly overseeing a mission to retrieve a Shroud of Eden from somewhere along the Nister River. Once he heard of Ammon's failure to retrieve the Shroud, he ended up being more interested in the man who killed Ammon because he was told it was a Norseman with a mark on his neck, who had killed him. When he heard of the man, he decided that he must meet him. On the day that he received instructions to find and assassinate Kyotve the Cruel, Basim met with Sigurd Schreibernson, the man who had killed Amon. When the two met, Sigurd was planning a raid on the Hagia Sophia in Constantinople, but Basim was able to convince him otherwise, and traveled to Norway with him, along with his apprentice, Hytham. Arriving in Fornsberg in 872, Basim and Haytham were present when Amon's hidden blade was presented to Eivor Varen's daughter by Sigurd. Haytham was confused, but Basim did allow it. When strapping it on, Eivor put it on top of her wrist, and when Basim went to correct her, she stated that she didn't want to hide it, or make a mistake like Haytham and Basim did with their own blades, thinking that it was a mistake that resulted in the loss of their ring fingers. When Haytham went to correct her about it not being a mistake, Basim stopped him and led her to start training with the hidden blade. The morning after training, Eivor made a report on Kyotve's men that led to Basim having Haytham search the area for more spies, and Basim accompanied Sigurd and Eivor to a raid on Notfall, a whaling village under Kyotve's control, intent on seeing to the death of Kyotve. After the battle, Basim informed Eivor that they had come to make sure that Kyotve had died, because he was part of the Order of Ancients, and that he was Haytham's target, but as long as Kyotve died, it did not matter who swung the killing blow. During the duel between Eivor and Kyotve at Agder, Haytham attacked but failed his mission being thrown against a solid rock wall. Kyotve did die at Eivor's hand, and after his death, his son Gorm refused to lay down his arms, and Basim ended up helping take the fortress. After the battle, Basim went with Sigurd to Alkristad, as a guest of King Harold Fairhair. Here, he spoke to Eivor of Haytham's injuries and asked if Kyotve had a silver medallion on him with the symbol of an ash tree on it. Eivor did have one such medallion, gave it to him. After receiving the medallion, Basim taught her how to blend with the crowd so she could get close to Gorm in King Harold's capital. After King Harold's Althing, where he took the throne of a united Norway, Sigurd and Eivor went to England to forge their own path especially after Sigurd's father, Stryborn, pledged his kingdom to Harold. Basim and Haytham went with them, and after starting to settle the area, Basim explored England, meeting back up with Sigurd in Oxenfordshire. Here, Basim worked with Sigurd for a quote-unquote single purpose, wanting to find a paladin known only as Folke, believing her to be an ally. After helping Eivor and Sigurd save the thanes of Oxenfordshire from the Lady Eowyn, the pair helped Basim free Felke from St. Alban's Ivy. After freeing Felke, she took them to where she hid a relic that was said to have been brought to England by Ragnar Lothbrok. This item was known as the Saga Stone. 
After getting to its location, they find the stone is gone and a fight breaks out between Lady Eowyn's men after Eivor grew upset of an idea that was thrown out about going against the word that she had given Giedrich. Eventually, the group takes Eowyn's seat at Seinbell Castle. After taking the castle, they find the Saga Stone, and Sigurd understands what's on the stone, praising Basim for his insight and prophecy. After the battle, King Alfred of Wessex arrived, and Sigurd called for a parley, where Basim advised a swap of the best warriors, and then offered himself as the man to go with Alfred. This is where Falke entered, and she came forward and convinced Alfred to actually take Sigurd instead, and to let him be kept in her care. After everyone agreed and Alfred left, Basim told Eivor that he would shadow them and that they would not get away. The trail led Basim to Kent. At St. Hadrian's Priory, he met with Eivor after talking to Brother Hortbert about his faith trying to get an idea of what the local Christians held within their heart. Meeting with Kinebert, Basim offered Eivor's help to find out who the new elderman of Kent was going to be, so that they could gain his favor. After Eivor delivered the news in full stand, the three came up with a plan to kidnap the next elderman, Tedmund, from Beamsfield, as he oversaw the fortifications of Canterbury, based on information that Basim had. On the way to kidnap Tedmund, Basim recanted a children's story that explained how everything has so many different outcomes, and that if Chinobert does not give up Falke after he saves Tedman from their capture, he was going to kill Chinobert himself. After capturing the man that they thought was Tedman, they found out during meeting with Chinobert that he was actually a decoy. Uh, finding out that this man was a decoy forced them to go to Rochester to get Tedman, but they knew they needed an army. On the way to recruit one, Basim spoke about how it is an art and a science to bend a man to one's will, and even harder to convince them that they are the ones in firm control. After saving a woman by the name of Runa from Saxons, Eivor and Basim spoke about his life being unusual to most of the hidden ones, and that their ideas are universal, and that their ideas do travel, but that he has no home, because to him, Home is family, and he has no family. The next day, he went to Bunkingham to ask Giedrich to help them take Rochester. After the siege, Basim was then present for an exchange of the true Tedmund, though Tedmund died during the exchange because of poison. When they returned to St. Hadrian's Priory the next day, they found Falke there, noting that she didn't bring Sigurd, but she did kill Kinebert. After saying again that the gods speak through Sigurd, she left the priory and told her men to kill them and take the bodies to her abbey in Canterbury. After escaping the would-be assassins, Basim and Eivor then headed to Canterbury. At Folke's sanctum, they found the saga stone and scrolls that showed Folke's knowledge of the Isu and that she was actually a member of the Order of the Ancients. The pair ended up finding Sigurd's arm in a box on a chair that was clearly meant to torture someone. When asked... Basim mentions that a man can physically survive the loss, but maybe not mentally, and stated that he would scout the only lead they had of Sigurd's location, Portchester. When Eivor arrived at Croendine, Basim mediated the first meeting between her and the legendary Viking leader, Gunthrum, leading to an uneasy alliance because of Eivor's frustration of Sigurd's imprisonment. Meeting Eivor near Portchester Castle, Basim helped Eivor and Guthrum fend off Folke's men, but after the skirmish, Guthrum left despite Basim's best efforts. Eventually, Eivor weakened the area and Basim helped at Brigworth, where they burned some boats and killed two commanders. Basim participated at the siege of Porchester, where after the battle, they found Sigurd in a church, and while Eivor went after Folke, Basim stayed with Sigurd, eventually taking him back home to Ravensthorpe, as Eivor held back reinforcements from Wessex. In 877, Basim followed Eivor and Sigurd back to Norway, following them to an Isu temple. After they interacted with a device that was located there, he attacked the pair, taking Sigurd hostage and beckoning Eivor closer. The two had a brief fight where Basim tried to see her neck, but realized that the mark he knew Sigurd had would not end up on Eivor, 
because it would have been covered by the scar she was given by a wolf that attacked her when she was nine. During the fight, Basim referenced Eivor being the Mad One and Sigurd the Justice Bringer. But together, the two was able to connect him to the device inside the temple. Here, Basim sat for almost 1,200 years, until 2020, when Leila Hassan arrived to the temple and entered the machine, where she ended up meeting Basim inside the device's simulation. During the conversation, Basim explained that he was the one who sent the message for Layla to find Eivor and to find the device, and that he had read calculations with the reader, and after finding the probable resting place of Eivor, used the internet to send the signal, explaining that Isu Tech works much like the internet. Showing the activation pedestal of the machine, he stated that another catastrophe is close at hand, and that this node has an ugly way of correcting itself. When Layla touched the device, Basim was released, landing on the staff of Hermes Trismegistus, restoring his body. He then has a conversation with Aletheia about how the Mad One is gone, and that Layla fulfilled her role perfectly. Eventually, he makes it back to Massachusetts and tells Sean Hastings and Rebecca Crane what happened, and asks some questions about the transition from the Hidden Ones into Assassins. Wanting to set a face-to-face meeting with the current mentor, William Miles, stating it is time to take the fight to the Templars. When Sean and Rebecca hesitate, Bassam tells them not to worry that the Animus is in good hands, as they had invented similar technology long before humans, and that he'd figure it out. After the pair left, Bassam visited Eivor's grave, telling her bones that he plans to take her memories, skills, and secrets to find his family and children, and to bring them back together. Basim's not the easiest character to figure out. Throughout the story of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, we see Basim through the eyes of Eivor, and to her, he's secretive and manipulating Sigurd to such a degree that Eivor feels that she doesn't understand who Sigurd is anymore by the time Sigurd loses his arm. Basim never comes out and says, I am Loki reborn, but following the information that we get from the Animus Anomalies and the Asgard and Jotunheim arcs, we are able to put together this bit of information by the end of the story. Basim calling Eivor and Sigurd names, which Loki would have called Javi and Tyr, and Loki and Basim having similar appearances and voices, are the biggest clue to Basim being a reincarnated Loki. One of the questions that I have about Basim throughout the story of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, though, is how long has Basim known that he has held the memories of Loki? While it's unclear, his description to Eivor about what he learned from al Khwazmi makes it seem that that is when he learned he was a sage, by stating that he found wisdom with al Khwazmi. One of Basim's most important scenes in the game, and one that seems to be a favorite of the community, is during the Kent arc, where he sits around a campfire with Eivor, talking about his life, and what it means to him to be a hidden one. It took a few viewings of this scene, and at first it felt like Basim was talking about his life in the Middle East, and that he was more willing to go across the world because of the loss of family. But after playing through the game and watching the scene again, I can say that's not how I perceive it now. Here, he talks about children and what they can be for a parent, causing worry and filling you with joy. On my subsequent viewings, I realized that this is a memory from Loki, not Basim himself going so far as to say that he had a son who was taken from him by a man who he trusted with anything, and that someone you trust with anything can take everything from you, something we see directly in the Asgard and Jotunheim arcs. There's one more moment that proves Basim is a reincarnation of Loki. During the Asgard and Jotunheim arcs, we see that Loki and Angrabada are in some way together, having at least one son, Fenrir. And when Basim recovers from the Yggdrasil device, he speaks to Aletheia, calling her my dear, and stating their plan worked perfectly. If you listen, you can tell that Aletheia and Angrabada also have similar voices, like Basim and Loki. This scene, though, does bring more questions than answers, some of which we have to look into Norse mythology to not only ask, but to answer especially considering that the story arcs of Asgard and Jotunheim take a lot of inspiration from the Poetic Edda and the Prose Edda. After Basim heads to Eivor's grave, he mentions that he will find his children and bring his family back together. 
This line makes me ask a few questions about what he means, as we only see Fenrir in the form of a wolf during the two mythical arcs. While the two Norse collections show Loki and Agrabata to be the parents of Fenrir, but also of Hel and Jormunder, the world serpent. They also show Loki to be the mother of Sleipnir, Odin's eight-legged horse, and the father of Vali, though Vali is also mentioned to be the son of Odin. Considering that Sleipnir is also the son of Savari, the stallion of the Builder, who we see in the Asgard arc, but not Savari. I think it's safe to assume that because Salfari is not shown helping the Builder as he does in the tale, a Slepnir is not the child of Loki, especially with the two myth clerks showing Javi riding a great reindeer named Hiran instead of Slepnir. And because Vali is more often mentioned as the son of Odin, I believe that if he is an Isu, he will be the son of Javi. What does this mean for bringing the family back together, though? Is Fenrir alive as a sage like Basim, or is his consciousness trapped in another piece of Eden like Aletheia? Are their children from the myths also their children as Isu? Is the fact that they're monsters within the myths important? We see Fenrir as a wolf, but that's through the prism of Norse mythology. Does that mean they are some experiments like Project Olympios, or are they human Isu hybrids like Eve? And how will Basim move forward to bring his family together? Add Aletheia's manipulation of Layla, and we have to ask, is this the new antagonist of the series? Or will they be shown as sympathetic, with Havi being in the wrong to take Fenrir from them, and having us play as Basim in the modern day? So much is unknown about Loki's history, that we don't have any idea how this story will go. But this is the first time in a long time that I'm 100% invested in the modern day story, without needing DLC to get me excited again. Speaking of DLC, Valhalla has two upcoming DLCs that continue Zavor's story. And I have to ask, will we see the modern day story continue? Will we see Basim eventually meet and talk to William Miles? I really hope so, as this conversation could really show what the future of the modern day story will look like, and hopefully expand on why and how Basim intends to bring his family together and his statement about going after Templars. Digging through the history of Loki and his relationship with Aletheia, along with his rivalry with Odin, goes much deeper than I can get into today, and will be something I discuss when we talk about the Yggdrasil device itself. But until then, let me know your thoughts on Basim in the comments below, and thank you for joining me today, and be sure to tune in every Tuesday for new episodes. If you love the Visions of the Past podcast, please subscribe and share this podcast with others. If you have any questions about Assassin's Creed or topics that you'd like me to cover, please feel free to hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at visions underscore AC. And you can find those links in the show notes below. Until next time, my Assassin friends, make sure to follow the Creed. And to those Templars listening, may the Father of Understanding guide you.